Hello everyone. Um, welcome to uh, Kubernetes maintenance track. Uh, we are going to we are a structured logging working group, and we'll be going through the things that we have done in Kubernetes to make uh, logging in Kubernetes more contextual and structured, and how uh, you can leverage that to better monitor your Kubernetes clusters. I'm Shivanshu, and I'm accompanied by uh, Myang Jio and uh, yep, let's get started. So who are we? We are part of SIG instrumentation, uh, which takes care of instrumenting all the Kubernetes components, be it API server or any other Kubernetes component. Um, SIG instrumentation takes care of uh, instrumenting the, like providing the traces, matrix, and uh, events logs. And WG structured logging takes care of uh, developing and maintaining all the libraries that are needed to have a structure and contextual logging in, uh, in Kubernetes. So the target audience for today's talk is uh, people and the public cloud providers who are managing Kubernetes, teams who are managing Kubernetes uh, like on on-prem, on developers who are building uh, OSS or uh, SaaS solutions for monitoring agents, and they want to build something to monitor Kubernetes, and the contributors who are contributing who are contributing to Kubernetes itself. So the agenda includes uh, going through some introduction around what structured and contextual logging in Kubernetes is, some recent developments, and a demo to understand how you can uh, leverage the changes and uh, set up a monitoring of Kubernetes. So uh, to start with structured logging, there are a couple of things that we had to do to make logging in Kubernetes stable, starting with uh, designing the log schema. Um, so it's, it's basically a message with the key value pairs in Kubernetes that we have uh, developed. And the key log library that is used in Kubernetes uh, depends and models on the log R. So here's uh, an example of the changes uh, that Klog has on top of log R so that anybody who is writing or, er, or contributing code to Kubernetes can use some methods so that they can just have uh, some details around that pod or any Kubernetes object. Um, we also have introduced a uh, logging format in Kubernetes. So instead of just a text uh, logging format with like you can configure in your Kubernetes cluster and all your Kubernetes con components so that each Kubernetes component is logging in a JSON format. Here's a sample JSON uh, format example. For JSON, we use uh, Zepar and uh, the other, like for structured, we use, we still use Klog. Uh, let's take a look at how contextual logging in Kubernetes is. So e effectively, um, the meaning of contextual logging is adding some additional context in your logs um, so that you there's the context is remained through uh, through all the logs uh, that are there so for example um, how we have done it in kubernetes so there's a, a global logger um, which is being replaced by logger logger instance um, into functions and the context is uh, maintained in individual logging uh, by providing the actual context. It's built on top of structured logging, and it enables the caller to provide some context. We can use a logger as a key, concatenated by dot, so that we know which, uh, like we'll understand this by example, uh, like how the logging is done. We can also have some key value pairs uh, added in the contextual logs so that uh, there is some um, context maintained. We can also change the logging verbosity. Um, and for unit test, and so for example, what happens in Kubernetes CI, uh, like if the jobs are running parallelly, if the multiple unit tests are running parallelly in Kubernetes CI, things fail and we don't know which unit test is failing. Um, with contextual logging, we can actually see uh, which particular unit tests when they are running in parallel uh, are failing. Um, so for example, uh, let's say 
a cube scheduler uh, starts a pod, and uh, it would, like in the Kubernetes code, it would create a new uh, instance for the logger. And then the cube scheduler would initiate some plugins. Then the, another logger would be in initiated there. But uh, if there is no contextual logging, we don't know um, which plugin is associated with which particular log. But with uh, contextual logging in place, that information is there. So here's an example of a contextual log. Uh, we have the message attempting to bind port to node. And then there's a logger information. So bind dot default binder is there. And we know which particular pod is logging this. So with this context, if someone is um, trying to establish uh, monitoring on top of Kubernetes, there's, there's a lot of information there. And they can bring in some automation so that they can better manage their Kubernetes clusters and components. So let's talk about some recent developments uh, that are gone into it. So we went uh, beta in uh, version 1.30 in Kubernetes with contextual logging. Um, the focus now is to carefully extend APIs in uh, staging repos so that they support contextual and structured logging. This implies adding uh, alternative APIs because we cannot break the existing Kubernetes code. And the log check uh, can now enforce that we use the newer APIs in Kubernetes. We have more help is needed from the fellow contributors so that we make this uh, possible. La for There's another thing that uh, the S-log support is now there. Um, S-log got added in uh, Go 1.21. And with that, there is interoperability with S-log, which is now provided by Logr. S-log is a new standard library package, which is comparable to Logr, as the design was partly derived from it. Uh, but it's not a full replacement, uh, since there is no logger in context and no log helpers in S-log. So in Kubernetes, we still continue, continue to use Logr. Um, Yes, full interoperability is supported. Logr can turn a S-log handler into a Logr logger instance and vice versa. The only missing piece uh, here is, I mean, the missing piece of puzzle here is to solve the S-log default, like make S-log default inside Kubernetes binaries. And there's uh, a PR um, pending for merge from Patrick for that. Keylog package updates, they are not much update, but uh, now set with set s log logger, we can enable s log as backend in Kubernetes. Yep, Kubernetes bypasses legacy code. Uh, Kubernetes itself uh, deprecated most of the keylog flags a while back. Uh, now in version 1.30, it also bypasses the code implementing them, uh, which improves the overall performance. Some updates around k testing package. Um, so, some work is happening in the Kubernetes test utils k testing package to turn that package into a test helper that works with both Go test and Jinko test. Help uh, needed here as well. Let's see these things in action because that's when it will make more sense how, how an end user can leverage all of this. So, we'll go through a multi cluster setup. Um, we'll change the default logging configuration from text to JSON. We'll see some Kubernetes components logging in JSON format, um, control manager, scheduler, and, and API server. We are using open telemetry collector as a logging agent. You can use any, uh, any logging agent to collect the logs from Kubernetes clusters. We are using open telemetry collector, file log receiver, so that we are also able to inject some of the resource attributes from the service. And we'll use uh, Loki as a data source and Grafana for the UI. So like on a high level, this is the demo that we are going to see. Open telemetry collector with file log receiver is installed in the Kubernetes cluster. It's collecting logs from the Kubernetes components. Everything is being sent to an open telemetry collector running as a backend to ingest all the telemetry data. Grafana Loki is 
the like open dynamic character is exporting everything to grafana loki as and grafana is using loki as a data source to see the logs uh, yeah um we use kind of to a simulator uh simulator multi cluster uh now uh, it is uh, uh, cluster one uh We can collect collector, uh, Cooper controller manager, Cooper API server, Cooper scheduler, uh, Porter uh, logs. Uh, default uh, the log uh, format uh, is uh, text text format. We can see the log output uh, uh, k equal value k equal value. Now we can uh, change the log format uh, log form uh, log format uh, from text to JSON. Um, then we can collection uh, collection JSON log from Kubernetes uh, uh, component components log. We use the Kube scheduler as example to change the logging format. Yeah, we can say the Kube scheduler port is not ready. Wait a, a second for the port to restart. Yeah, now it is running. We can say uh, the Kube scheduler log output is JSON format. Yeah. Now it's JSON format. We have uh, installed uh, Open Telemetry Collector Agent uh, to collect uh, Open uh, Kubernetes components uh, logs. Uh, open Telemetry Collector uh, logs. Uh, open Telemetry Collector Agent will send logs to Loki, Grafana Loki, uh, to log uh, collect the logs and then uh, this is uh, configuration um, this is uh, locate in the price uh, address and the way in just uh, some attributes uh, to uh, locate and uh, we can uh, use uh, this label to select such as the namespace the name, pod name, and so on. You can add uh, some attributes uh, 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 co uh, cooperating your needs. Now uh, we can uh, we can open the Grafana uh, links to. Uh, visible the logs. We use Loki as the uh, data source. Um, we select the class class name uh, equal class one. So uh, select the label um, port name. Um, equal group scheduler as example. Then then run uh, run query and then we can say the log up uh, log output. I uh, sorry. This this 
uh, this is uh, one pot, uh, one, uh, one pot named the uh, not a Kubo scheduler. Uh, sorry, wait a minute. Yeah, now it is a group scheduler, uh, a group scheduler post. We can uh, we can use some uh, uh, failure to uh, collect the logs and the research uh, and the search. Uh, now we can create a uh, uh, deploy. Uh, named uh, NGX, uh, then uh, we can uh, we can say uh, NGX logs in Kube Scheduler logs. Yeah, now we can say the uh, result uh, container NGX. If you want to uh, uh, search uh, more uh, condition, you can uh, use more query, uh, use Grafana. Uh, we use uh, context to log in. Uh, mm, in Kube Scheduler, uh, we um, uh, attach the pod uh, object uh, information to uh, to to logs. So we search the NGX. Uh, uh, we can uh, get the uh, the information we need. Okay, the demo is uh, basically over. Uh, sorry for the hiccups, but uh, yeah, if you are an end user uh, and you want to figure out how to observe better, like there are references that are there in the slides that I will upload uh, to the schedule link. And um, if you are um, a contributor in, and you want to get yourself familiarized with the Kubernetes code base, then probably it's an easiest way to get involved with structured and contextual logging and that way you would be able to contribute and also understand the Kubernetes code base. And if you are an, uh, uh, someone who is building uh, observability solutions and you want to build something to monitor Kubernetes effectively, then, then yep, there are resources in the Slack, there are things in progress and you're always welcome to join our Slack and um, uh, there are uh, some resources on blogs that we have published um, and some of the performance tests that we have done. Um, yeah, take this, take those things as a reference to uh, start pointing your communities effectively. Questions are welcome. Um, yeah, and thanks for coming.